I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. My parents really are my role models. My mom was an advocate for education. My father uh, usually worked three different jobs. He was a World War II veteran. He served in the 92nd Division, which was called the Buffalo Soldiers. And they were actually rather famous because it was the only African-American infantry that saw combat. He served in Italy. He was a recipient of a Purple Heart. I attended the University of Wisconsin. They offered me a full scholarship to run a track. And one of the counselors said to me, well, what are you going to do now um, for the rest of, your, rest of your life here? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm thinking about graduate school, but, you know, I really don't know. And he looked at my um, test scores from when I was in high school, and he said, you know, you have an aptitude for biological sciences. And he happened to be another African-American person. They were making loans available for people to uh, spend extra time after their athletic scholarships at had ended, spent four years in medical school, and then I did my postgraduate training here in New York at Harlem Hospital. All of us who were there were there because we wanted to be there. We wanted to serve an underserved population. And I had an excellent mentor there, a person who I greatly respect, Dr. Gerald Thompson, who went on to be the first African American to be the president of the American College of Physicians. My first job was at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx and I was in charge of the infectious disease program there. And I then had some private practice activities as well. And in the mid-90s, 1996, I actually was recruited by uh, a colleague to take a position in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and so I worked for Pfizer. When I retired from the pharmaceutical industry, I was recruited by Dr. Marissa Montecalvo uh, to come to the health department. She said, you know, we've got a great position. We only have to work, you know, like maybe three days a week. And so after I joined, within uh, six months, the pandemic started. Dr. Dial Hewlett, who was one of our three men. And Dr. Amler said, you know, this is all hands on deck. Work on the coronaviruses and on, uh, a, on the development of a vaccine. You've got an infectious disease background. We really need for you to help us with this pandemic. And so that's, that's actually how it started. I have to keep on producing uh, because if you're going to be a trailblazer, that means that you have to be at the front and not in the back. You can't blaze the trail from the back of the, of the uh, crowd. I must say that were it not for the support of my spouse of nearly 40 years, I don't think that I could have done a lot of the things that I'm doing. Marrying her was the best decision I ever made, I think, in my whole life. And uh, we have four children. All of them are, of course, adults. And uh, three of them have children of their own. When I look at my background, uh, I look at uh, what my parents went through. I look at what my grandparents went through, my great-grandparents. They basically tried to make things better for me. And I look at what Dr. King did, what he did in terms of opening doors for people like myself to get into the various professions at the time that I got into medical school. And that's something that I want to try to pass on to a lot of our younger uh, individuals in our, in our community, in our county, and uh, in our state and country. Take advantage of these opportunities that are available uh, to us and to try to find out where they are going to be able to make the greatest contribution uh, to our society.